Hey, what's up, Will Hamilton here. And if you're like most players, you're only using part of your body to generate power on your serve, your forehand, and your backhand, meaning you're leaving power on the table. You're not hitting as hard as you could. So if, for example, you feel like you're arming your serve, then I want to invite you to pick up a copy of Crush It, because inside, Dr. Mark Kovacs shows you 26 drills that allow you to generate power from your entire body so that you can hit your serve, your forehand, and your backhand much, much harder. So what I want to do right now is take you inside Crush It and show you one of the drills so that you can see if it's right for you. The drill is called the Shot Put Serve. It's one of the coolest things I have ever seen and it allows you to get power out of your shoulder and your arm. It's drill number seven out of the seven drills for the serve. And if I click on the seven, the video explaining how to do it pops up. And this guy right here is Dr. Mark Kovacs. And let me briefly introduce him before we watch the video. Dr. Kovacs is widely recognized as the world's leading expert on tennis biomechanics, how your body should be moving when you hit a forehand, a backhand, or a serve. And he's also a hell of a tennis player. In 2002, he won the NCAA Division I Men's Doubles Championship. And in 2011, after he got his PhD, he published the world's leading study on the serve. It's called an eight-stage model for evaluating the tennis serve. It's been peer-reviewed twice, and it won him the International Tennis Hall of Fame's Educational Merit Award. He was the youngest ever recipient. So the bottom line is, Dr. Mark Kovacs is the guy people go to when they want to hit harder. Players all the way from the Pro Tour down to the USTA league and club level have flown down to Atlanta, Georgia to have Mark personally walk them through his drills for generating more power. But when I saw these drills, I said, Mark, look, we got to get these things online. And that's exactly what we did with Crush It. So now let's go inside and look at drill number seven, the shot put serve. This is all about how you can get power out of your shoulder and your arm. Power killer seven, the myth of pronation or wrist snap. We've all heard the term pronation or wrist snap on the serve. The challenge is it doesn't actually happen the way I think most people think or some people have been taught. And that's really important for us to discuss. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you, you look online, you kind of go to YouTube and you, you type in tennis serve and you get a bunch of videos on how do you pronate properly? Or how do you snap your wrist to get more spin or more power? And based on your research, it sounds like none of those things are actually happening. Yeah, no, definitely. The, the work that I've done looking at footage for the last you know, 10 to 15 years, plus a lot of great biomechanical researchers in the field of tennis across the globe, we know how the serve happens. We know what the ideal biomechanical sequence is, and we know what happens at contact. And the big misconception is that there is all this movement occurring at contact. Mm -hmm. we, we have to understand to have a solid contact position, it's stable and it's solid when the ball hits the strings. So there isn't a wrist snap going on. There isn't movement going on at that point. There's movement that occurs before and after, but at point of contact, we want stability. And we're talking about stability in terms of the, in terms of the arm. Correct. So yeah, so a lot of people are thinking, well, when I swing up, I need to be here, and then I'm pronating, which is sort of the motion with the forearm and the wrist, and then I got to snap to, to get that pace on the ball. So if that's something you've been focusing on in the past, turns out it's not backed up by, by the science. So, so, what, um, so what does correct contact actually look like? What should we actually, let, let's start with that. Uh, and then move on to you know sort of what we should actually be doing, what the swing should look like, and how we can practice it. For sure. So correct contact is quite simple. You know we've got this shoulder position. We've talked about it before. Shoulder over shoulder position. Contact points there, so it's stable. So we're getting into this position of contact. And the racket string bed actually looks like this. It doesn't look like this. It doesn't look like that at contact. It actually is really much straight on. What causes us to have spin, slice, top spin, things like that, is the trajectory of the racket to that point and what happens slightly afterwards. But at contact, we're very stable and it's very consistent looking. So we have to understand that the stability of point of contact is our number one goal here. And, and you know, it's, it's interesting where, you, where you're, you're demoing that shoulder over shoulder position because for a lot of players, they've been taught, I should be facing the net at contact and when that happens, well, yeah, it does. I, I do kind of need to pronate now to get the strings to face in the right direction. So at contact, you should not be facing 
the net like you just talked about. You're actually more in a sideways shoulder over uh, shoulder position. And what's the term for, for you know, people have seen the, the clips of the racket coming up on mm -hmm. edge and then ending up oriented exactly. in the right direction. What's the actual uh, biomechanical term, if that's the right sure. phraseology, for what is happening with the arm and the shoulder to get the racket around? Yeah, it's a really, really good question. And one of the things we have to understand is what happens with the racket path. And when we get back in, it's called a max external rotation position, when the bottom tip of the racket is back, it actually faces the ground. So the tip of the racket faces the ground. That's the last point before we start accelerating the racket head. So that's the storing of energy in the upper body. We've transitioned from the lower body, all that energy, into the racket. And now this is the last point before we start accelerating. Often called the racket drop. Exactly. This terminology you see a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And in baseball, if you want to relate it to that, it's called the cocking position in baseball. We use similar terminology in tennis as well. That's where that position shifts from storing to accelerating. Mm -hmm. And the time it takes to get from here to contact in the best servers is one one hundredth of a second. It happens in the blink, blink of an, of an eye. eye. Yeah. And, and that's why there's not a lot of, con there is no conscious thought going on at that point. It's all, okay, have we done everything right beforehand to contact? And what happens at contact to go from here to that, from that position to contact is this term called long axis rotation. And that's a term that's been coined by some great biomechanical researchers out of Australia that have been studying this for two to three decades, looking at the service motion. And what happens is we have internal shoulder rotation, so the shoulder actually turns, and then you get the concept of pronation. We have to understand the pronation happens at the forearm, and it's very simply just turning outwards like that. Supination is when our palm comes up, pronation is when our palm goes down or down and out and that occurs in one long sequence if it's done correctly so the racket goes through it makes contact and it's already starting to turn but when we see it is two to three frames if we're looking at video uh, it's in slow motion of a player then we start seeing this position the contact of the strings actually faces the side fence but that happens when the ball's already landed on the other side of the net. Okay, so a lot to unpack there. Um, so let me just walk through it. The, to get the racket from the racket drop up is this more long axis rotation, which is kind of the entire arm from the shoulder mm -hmm. moving as a piece. Exactly. You get pronation after contact, mm -hmm. it sounds like. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, not something that happens before you hit the ball. And... The other thing you, you touched on, I want to take a step back and, and make this very clear, is because from the racket drop up to contact, it happens so fast, you can't put any conscious thought into it. You almost, it doesn't sound like, can realistically control what you're doing in terms of fine motor skills. Sure. Getting yourself in position to swing properly, and you said this, is all about what you do before you actually swing. It's all about the preparation, and if you've prepared properly, this almost kind of happens on its own. When you, when you release all that energy into the swing, it kind of happens on its own. So if you're spending a lot of time thinking about your swing, thinking about snapping your wrist, you, you can't do that. That's not how it, it, it works in, in sort of the real world in, in terms of the science or the, or the biomechanics. I hope I'm explaining that. 100% okay. right. And if you are putting too much conscious thought into that aspect of the motion, then you end up arming your serve and actually, you know, killing your power. Yeah. So if you feel like you're muscling it and you're trying, you're working really hard, but you're not getting any pace, that's the reason. So, um, so people are now wondering, Mark, well, this is great. You've explained the science. Um, how do I, you know, if, if this is a motion, I can't really consciously practice or I can't, you know, make myself do it. Is there a drill I can do or a series of drills I can do that'll get me moving properly. Yeah, for sure. So what we will do, we'll get you set up in a regular service position. Okay. And we call this the shot put tennis serve. And we have a progression of drills to get you comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. One of the best movements that we can do is actually a traditional shot put movement like in track and field. Why, what our goal is to really get our body in the right position, make sure that we're sinking our lower and upper body correctly, and then working on stability at point of release in the shop, which is very similar to our point of contact in the tennis serve. 
Okay, so where should I go? I'm, I'm assuming I don't need a racket. No, no you okay. don't need a racket in this point. We're gonna set up though, just like we would a tennis serve. Okay. So, so we'll like get this. you set. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna put the ball in your dominant arm. I'm a lefty. Mm -hmm. And we'll, so, have you, we'll have you demo this in a second on exactly. the righty, so. So th this will work well. Okay. What we wanna do here is position yourself like you would a shot put. So get into your trophy position. Okay, so be like this. So exactly, and then from a standpoint of training, you wanna tweak the hip there a little bit more. more. So okay. now we've got the twist rotation so twist, in the hip. Okay. Weight's mostly on the back leg. Exactly. Okay. About 70% of your weight at this point is on the back leg. So we're shifting back, twist rotating here, and we're in a good position there. Arm up. Arm up. Okay, so this is our start position. So this is from a shot put standpoint, where we want to start. From here, we're going to slowly go forward just to demonstrate and get into that shoulder over shoulder position at contact. Like that? Exactly. Okay. So now we have a nice line that goes all the way down from his heel all the way up to his hand and he's getting in that position that we want one thing to train as well is just to relax this position here and have that arm more tucked here. into the side okay. gotcha. so some of you can look at some of the top pros and you'll see a contact their non-dominant arm is tucked in comfortably to the side it's not released out here like hanging out on its own some of the poorer servers you'll see their arm will be already out and opened up like too this. early. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I'm sure many of y'all have have videoed yourselves, mm -hmm. but if if there's this, or if you just see yourself at contact facing like that, then it's probably an indication your swing is wrong, and you, you, maybe it's because you've been focusing on pronation of the wrist snap or stuff like that. Exactly. So okay. we really want to highlight the important aspects here. So we get yourself set. Better, is that better? Yeah, exactly. Better twist, right? Looks great. And then from this position, I just want you to throw and release, but don't jump. Okay, so just like that. Exactly. So right. it's real so simple motion. I'm staying sideways like this, though. Exactly. Okay. So you're emphasizing this sideways shoulder over shoulder. Sometimes you'll hear the term cartwheel position. It's the same okay. concept. And you can feel it here exactly. on my left side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to progress and we're going to take this to another level. And he's going to do one more just to get the feeling. So get in that position, load, and then release up. And our goal here is to try to throw as high as you can. Okay. Our goal is not to throw like a line drive. It's to throw it as high as possible. Okay. Now, once you feel comfortable, I want you to do the same motion, but now jump into the court like you would with the serve. Like a normal serve. Okay. So here's good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Good. And, and do, I land on my, do I land on my side or do I follow through? You can follow through. Okay. So you can land. To, for the first couple, you want to get the motion to feel how you meant to go up to contact. So maybe almost stop like that exactly. just so I get it. From okay. a stability standpoint. And then over time, you can ex work on your pace and work on your distance. So be here, and then I might just freeze just exactly. to make sure I've got the release proper uh, done properly, and then I can try it again and maybe follow through like a normal serve. Hundred percent correct. All right, so get in my stance. Good load like yeah. that. that. Perfect work. load. Back leg looks good, and then accelerate up. And our objective here with a tennis ball is to really push up and out as high as you can. Aim for height, not necessarily right. just distance. Good. Last one. Really load up that back leg, get in great position, drop down, and Good. then shh. Perfect. Great toss. So from this perspective, we can see that our objective here is to really make sure that we have stability at point of contact, making sure that we're going up and out into the ball and working on the things that really do translate to a good, effective serve. Yeah, the, uh, the, the stability at point of contact, something, uh, you know, I had personally never really given much thought until, until you uh, first brought it to my attention. But that's really important because it's what transfers the energy from your body and racket into the ball. And you're going to feel that when you do this. I mean, it, you know, it's it's this this feeling. I think is going to be so different for a lot of players out there. If you've been focusing on pronation or the wrist snap, it's just going to seem like a very different uh, different feel. But the great thing about practicing that, that is you get the racket in the right position without a ton of thought um, and a ton of focus on exactly what you need to be doing with your arm. So it's a great drill for for just kind of syncing up the technique without. Uh, without a ton of conscious uh, thought, which, which you demonstrated and talked about just with the stats and, and the science, isn't really possible because the swing's so fast. So that drill was pretty cool, right?
And in a second, I've got something you might think is even cooler. It's something brand new with Martina Navratilova. But before I get ahead of myself, try this real quick. Shadow your normal service motion, and specifically your swing, and then get a, uh, get a fuzzy yellow ball and get into that shot put serve position and try it. Just maybe kind of shadow it in, uh, in your place and see if that swing is different from your normal swing. Because if it is, that means you are leaving a ton of power on the table. So the entire point of Crush It is that these drills target specific areas of your body, whether we're talking about the serve, your forehand, the one-handed backhand, or the two-handed backhand, and allow you to generate maximum power from those areas. Now to get access to these 26 drills inside Crush It, you don't have to fly down to Atlanta, Georgia. You don't even have to pay the normal price of $199 because for a limited time, you can get access to everything here on this page for just one payment of 67 bucks. And that gets you all seven of the drills for the two-handed backhand, all seven of the drills for the one-handed backhand, the five drills for the forehand, and then the seven drills for the serve. So when we were putting the finishing touches on Crush It, I was like, well, what would be the next thing somebody would need after they're suddenly hitting a lot harder? And I was like, well, they're not gonna be getting a lot of weak short balls, so the next logical thing would be to get to net and finish the point. And I was like, well, nobody does that better than Martina Navratilova. And as luck would have it, this past March 2022, we were with Martina. We spent an entire day covering how to get to the net and end the point. So I was like, you know what? I should just throw in this stuff with Martina for free. I was gonna charge 199 bucks, but when you pick up a copy of Crush It, I'm just gonna hook you up with this new stuff with Martina for free. It's called Rule the Net. So you can see that just like Crush It, there are numbers at specific spots around the court. And the reason is because each one of these numbers will take you to a play that has to do with that spot on the court. So if I click on one of them, We've got the video that comes up, and you can see Martina is right here, and she is explaining how to run that particular play. And for singles, Martina's got nine of her favorite plays for getting to the net and ending the point with easy volleys. Not those hero volleys, the tough low ones, the ones you're digging off your shoestrings. These are the easy ones that'll allow you to get to the net and put the ball away. Now, if you're a doubles player, no worries, because we've also got the doubles version of Rule the Net. These are 11 of Martina's favorite plays for getting to the net and setting up easy put away volleys and overheads. Works the same way as Crush It. You've got the numbers at specific places on the court and then you click on one of them and it takes you to a video where Martina explains how to do that particular play. Normally, if you bought Rule the Net separately, these 20 plays from Navatilova would cost $199. But when you pick up a copy of Crush It here on this page today, as part of this special deal, well, we're just gonna throw in Rule the Net, the singles version and the doubles version completely free. Now we've also got two other awesome bonuses with Martina. And the first is called Volleys That Stay Low. Because if you've ever served and volleyed, that first volley you hit around the service line, it can be tough. A lot of players pop it up and then it becomes very easy for your opponent to pass you with the next ball. Well, inside volleys that stay low, well, that's exactly what Martina shows you how to do. She shows you how to hit a volley that skids, that doesn't bounce very high, and that makes it incredibly difficult for your opponent to pass you. And in fact, what it makes your opponent do is they have to hit up, right? They have to hit the ball up to get it above the net, which means they are now setting you up with a high volley that you can put away. Normally, volleys that stay low is 49 bucks, but you get it for free as a bonus when you pick up a copy of Crush It here on this page today. Now the third bonus is volleys that don't come back. Because when you start hitting volleys that stay low and you force your opponent to hit up, you now have that put away volley. And there is nothing more annoying than having that put away volley and then not putting it away, allowing your opponents to get a racket on the ball and then you end up losing the point a couple shots later. Well, that all changes with volleys that don't come back because Martina is gonna show you just like a really simple technique tweak that allows you to stick that volley and actually put it away. Normally, volleys that don't come back is also 49 bucks, but you get it for free when you pick up a copy of Crush It. So here's the deal. 
you are getting Crush It, which is normally 199 bucks. And you're getting Rule the Net, which is also normally 199 bucks. You're getting volleys that stay low, $49 value. And you're getting volleys that don't come back, also a $49 value. You add all that up, it's 497 bucks. But instead of paying that, you can get it all for just one payment of $67 here on this page today. So all you gotta do is scroll down this page, click that button to start checkout, only takes a couple minutes, and then you will get instant access to everything. Crush it, rule the net, and the volley bonuses. Oh, and you are protected by our 365 day, no questions asked, money back guarantee. Which means you can take the 26 drills from Dr. Kovacs, and the 20 plays from Martina, and the volley technique from Martina, you can take it all for a whirl for the next year. At the end of that year, if you're like, Will, this just wasn't my thing, no worries. We will refund you your 67 bucks. It's really as simple as that. So if hitting harder and winning more points at the net is something you are interested in, scroll down this page, click that button, order, crush it, take it all for a whirl for the next year risk-free. I think you're gonna be really happy that you did.